Hi. Um, I'm, j I'm, I'm here a bit shocked, actually, because I, I wasn't really expected to speak. Um, and I'm, I, I don't come from your community, I'm afraid. I, I work in high-performance computing. Um, but I was speaking to an acquaintance in Bristol called Steve Lochran, who works on Hadoop. And, um, and he said this was a really good place to come to learn about Hadoop. And uh, when he introduced me to Isabel, she said, uh, give a talk. So I said, uh, OK. So um, I uh, work for a company called Wham Cloud. It's a, it's a brand new company. We were just um, formed to continue the development of the Lustre file system um, as an open source file system. Uh, and we work with community people, and uh, all those URLs down there are, are um, uh, resources that we, give, uh, that we offer to our community. Um, Lustre was a file system uh, was started. The initial conception was um, uh, occurred in in, uh, in 1999, um, and development started in earnest really about 2000 and well late 2001, early 2002. That's about when I joined the project. Um, we've um, been um, installing this file system at, at major supercomputing sites um, around the world ever since then. Um, the company that did the initial development was acquired by Sun in 2007, and uh, Sun in turn was eaten up by Oracle. And uh, when Oracle demonstrated no real interest in high-performance computing, um, that's when um, a bunch of us left to, to, um, to start this new venture. Um, Lustre file system is a POSIX file system, um, so it has a conventional namespace. Um, it, um, it has regular files and directories. Um, it's open source. Um, you can download the sources for, uh, for free. Um, it's well supported um, in the high performance computing community. Um, um, the uh, OpenSFS is, is the, one of the major bodies uh, which was formed in the US basically by vendors and the US labs who had the biggest sort of financial stake in it. Um, there was also another community group uh, composed of smaller players. Those two groups have now fused into uh, the OpenSFS, so I think we represent all the players in the community now. Um, there's a, a European um, um, community group as well, which has very strong links and cooperates well with OpenSFS. And um, Lustre really is the industry leading file system for high performance computing. Um, on the right here, you see the list of the top 10, uh, the, the last list of the top 10 um, um, HPC computers in the world. And uh, we run on, I think, about eight of them. Um, the reason Lustre is so, uh, so popular is because it really delivers the performance that high-performance computing applications need. And, and you can very loosely characterize them as um, there's a whole bunch of processes sitting on a huge big cluster. You know, it can be thousands, tens of thousands of nodes. Um, and what they do at the start is they need to load up a, um, a, a initial conditions for a, set of, for a simulation set, a model. Um, they have to then... Um, they have to compute on it, and then they typically write it back to the file system loads of times. Um, and that's something that Lustre does really well, it does streaming I.O. very well. It also scales to huge numbers of clients and scales to hundreds of servers. Um, uh, like I said, it's POSIX. It offers a very strong coherence model. That means that application developers can do I.O. to a shared file and expect the file to be um, to expect overlapping rights to serialize properly and non-overlapping rights just to, um, um, uh, to hit the file as desired. Um, it uses a distributed lock manager to do this. Um, it's also got HA features in it. This is the overall sort of architecture. Huge numbers of clients, um, a number of different networks supported natively. Um, um, so that means that, for example, when we are doing I.O., um, um, the f when you open a file, you will, a client will, con uh, will connect to the metadata server to find out uh, where the file is and how the file is striped. And that's the end of the communication between the client and the metadata server, really, for file I.O. Because once it knows how it's striped, then any offset, any I.O. to the file can be done completely independently, directly with the object storage servers. Um, all of these servers can be, um, can be configured in failover, uh, for failover for high availability. Um, 
just to give you a, a sort of a, a, an idea for the, the for, for a site that uses Lustre, here's um, Oak Ridge, the spider file system. Um, it consists of 192 server nodes. Each of these server nodes um, is capable of streaming I.O off disk, and they'll be probably on the order of 70 odd disks per node. Um, um, in, onto InfiniBand, this Scion network here is a site-wide InfiniBand network, and each of those servers will be serving at something like um, one and a quarter gigabytes per second. And so the overall bandwidth of the filing system with an application which is loading or, or dumping data sets from that Jaguar XT5 there on the left, and the aggregate data bandwidth there is about 240 gigabytes per second. Um, this gives you some of the idea how the system has to be architected in order to preserve that streaming bandwidth at all stages. Um, you have to ensure that you're not going to be running into bottlenecks. So, um, Luster is available um, from several sources. We are, uh, our, my company is the one that's um, most active in the development. Um, and uh, we publish our roadmap on the website. Um, and the reason I'm here is really I want to find out whether Lustre would be a good platform for performing that produce. Um, so I have loads of questions, and um, I still don't have answers to them. Um, we, we have um, an intern that's just started work on this, and we're hoping to actually do some, um, some good work measuring um, uh, Lustre being used as the back-end file store um, for um, Hadoop and MapReduce. Okay, I think that's all. In the, if there are any quick questions? Any questions? Okay. This one. Um, I was just wondering if, um, how it compared with, say, Parallel NFS that I think Sun started, um, or maybe uh, something like Ceph? Yeah, um, so um, Ceph, for example, is very similar. Um, Ceph has a, a sort of a separate object store from, the meta, from its metadata servers, and so uh, we, we make a strong association between our metadata servers and particular backend storage, and so that's kind of a difference. I would say that um, our individual operation speeds are way higher than Ceph, but Ceph just gets claws back the performance by scaling um, horizontally. Um, Parallel NFS, uh, I, I, Parallel NFS is really, it's not a competitor for Lustre, it's a way of, of giving I would say um, um, it's a standard, if you like. It's a standard protocol for external clients who don't have a Lustre client running in them uh, to communicate with a Lustre or, or some other parallel file system. Um, it doesn't give you the same coherence guarantees, for example, that um, something like running Lustre natively would. Thank you, Eric. Another question? Okay. What is the, the performance of the extent locking that you have? Um, so uh, we, we do sort of um, aggressive extent locking. L locking was the question, yeah? yeah. Um, so that when, uh, when a particular node um, wants, to, wants to do I.O. To a, to a file, it will try and lock all of the extents of the file. So if you're doing um, file per process style I.O., that's the end of it. So it's one round trip to the servers, which um, which is going to be on, you know, on the order of 100 microseconds or so, 100, 200 microseconds tops. Um, um, if they're locking conflicts, then, then basically the second lock request to arrive will cause a lock callback, which will make the first client release um, its lock and, and narrow its lock down to just the bit that it really, it really needed. Um, and so, um, you know, if you've got hundreds of thousands of processes all doing that concurrently, then there's a bit of a lock storm, which is probably over, over in, you know, in a second or so. Uh, but that's, you know, that's really, truly at scale. Um, we are actually looking at exascale I.O. models where we're going to have to throw away the locking entirely because you just cannot afford any sort of um, serialization and sort of um, dealing with stragglers is just the bane of any sort of file system like this is existence. Do you do any block replication, or do you depend on reliable storage? So um, right now we're using we're we're dependent upon backend storage being um, um, internally redundant and dual and, and at least dual ported or multi ported so that we can fail over. Um, it's clear that in order to um, to push um, Lustre into wider markets, then we're going to have to have uh, an internal 
um, replication model. We've steered shy of, um, of, of RAID style models because, we're, because of the RAID hole and ensuring transactional consistency of all the stripes. Um, for um, immutable data, though, that seems much less of an issue, and so we'd, we'd be, I think we're very inclined to start developing that. Also, um, asynchronous replication, I didn't mention here, but we've got, there's a development to support hierarchical storage management. We've got scalable ways of, of monitoring file system state that don't, re don't rely on scans. Um, we can use that um, to drive a policy engine, and the policy engine is, is, was designed really to move um, move data to, um, you know, to offline storage, but actually that's, we're, we're intending to also develop that um, into a way of, of implementing storage tiers and replication policies. Okay, thanks again, Eric. I would then propose to come to the next speaker, as we only have 10 minutes per speaker, and... I'm the next speaker. Simon, right. Sorry. <laughs>